Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a project where we're aiming to build this really large wildlife park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's episode we continue our dive into the new Africa pack by building a habitat for a pretty large group of meerkats. Now meerkats are super adorable and this is going to be quite a fun build I think. I had a lot of fun building it and these guys are adorable. If you like the sound of that, please do leave a like on the video and of course do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. I upload videos every Wednesday at 5pm UK time. Let's talk about today's episode. So, as you can see we are continuing work on our little Africa section which is going to include all of our really tiny uh, African animals that we've just got with this pack. We built the fennec fox habitat in the last episode and today of course we're going to focus on the meerkat. Next week we're going to do the little African penguins. Then perhaps we might actually take a break from the pack animals, use a few more of the smaller African animals we already have in the game, such as the Ardvark and maybe even the Warthog, stuff like that. And then we'll finally uh, fi uh, finish off with the Southern White Rhinoceros, of course, which is the uh, only really large animal that we got in the pack. But yeah, this habitat was a lot of fun to build, it's just on the other side of where the Fennec Fox habitat is. I want to include some really interesting elements here. so. As you can see, there's a glass wall that I'm building right now, um, including some of the mesh pieces. Absolutely love the mesh pieces, uh, by the way, really, really useful pieces. But what I wanted to have is essentially a tunnel system that you could kind of view from the indoor habitat. And it's a little bit tricky. I managed to get one level of the tunnels to like be usable by the meerkats and they do use it. But um, I couldn't really get them to go onto the upper levels, which is fair enough that it was hard for them to climb onto. And they're more subterranean than, you know, above ground caves, so I think it was fine. It still looks pretty cool and it's like a unique looking habitat, which I quite liked. Um, they also have loads of like exploratory space. You can see it's a pretty chunky sized habitat. It's about, uh, about 800 meters squared for about 16 meerkats. So pretty large for, you know, what is a really tiny animal, like a really tiny animal. These guys are quite possibly some of the smallest in the game now. And I think I mentioned this with the Fennec Fox habitat um, that we built last week. It's so nice to have smaller animals in the game now. But, you know, now that I've talked a little bit about what the habitat's going to be like, and I'll talk a little bit about it as we go along, I'd like to talk a little bit about meerkats themselves, which is so cute. So I actually went to the zoo, uh, London Zoo, just yesterday, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I went there as just kind of an end of term thing for my course. Uh, all of us went together and it was a lot of fun. Um, and we had like some lectures there about like science communication in zoos, which was great, a lot of fun to learn about how they do it there. And of course I did spot some meerkats in London Zoo. It was a bit of a cold day, they were all curled up together, which was so cute. But even when they do that, they had the one meerkat standing at the top at a log, acting as a bit of a scout. Of course meerkats do that, that's kind of one of the uh, really um, inherent things about the species is they're such a, a social species, they live in these big groups. And there's always one meerkat kind of on, like, at attention on top of a, like a high place, like a high log or top of a hill, looking out um, over the plains to make sure they're safe. And they have all these really complex calls to communicate, like, if there's a predator nearby, if the weather's changing, probably, you know, stuff like that. And um, they eat primarily like insects. They are insectivorous. That's why we have some of these termite mounds in the habitat that you'll see in a bit. But yeah, they're super adorable animals. One thing I didn't realize about them, and it's kind of obvious when I think about it, but I just never thought about it, um, is they're actually a type of mongoose. They relate to much um, larger mongooses, and I think they're like one of the smallest. There's only one smaller one, which is the dwarf mongoose, which coincidentally, they also have um, some of those at London too, which I spotted yesterday. Very, very cute. And here you can actually see me on screen just building that tunnel. Um, they only end up using that first layer at the bottom. Unfortunately, they just can't seem to climb up to the second. Before I film the cinematics, which I haven't done yet, I might try and fix that. And if I do, you might see that in the cinematics, but I don't think so. And I'm fine with them just using the bottom. They also have these amazing digging behaviors, by the way. These, uh, these meerkats, and meerkats in real life, of course, are extremely good at digging. Their claws are like perfectly designed for it. They can use their, those really long claws and just scoop uh, dirt out really fast and build these huge um, tunnel systems that go down about three layers or so. And it's really, that's kind of where they spend most of their time, that's where they raise their young. It's just really cool. They're of course very common in zoos, you may know, uh, you've probably seen meerkats in zoos all the time. They do pretty well in captivity. 
as long as they've got like a good social group to hang out with and they got enough space to build these tunnels and most importantly they need a high spot in their habitat to um, be able to scout. I tried to replicate that here um, with this thing on screen that you can see, the little platform on the rocks. Didn't end up working, I ended up scrapping this before the cinematics because they can't climb up there, they can't use the little ladder. So what I ended up doing is just putting just the rock there. Um, the game doesn't allow them to quite climb up there unfortunately, but they do have high spots that they can do and go and do their scouting behavior on and I'm sure we'll see some of that in cinematics. I'll try and get as many behaviors as can, which I love that they have all these cool behaviors. They're digging in the, in the game is such a cool mechanic too. They just disappear into the ground, they pop up somewhere else in the habitat. Really, really cool. And I, I just think that looks really nice. I'm sticking with kind of the similar theming here on, on this habitat, by the way, with uh, what we're doing for the most of the little Africa section, this light brick walls with the lighter wood and some of these African plants as well to kind of give it a more arid feel. But of course, because we are in the taiga environment, I don't want to completely uh, distance from that. I still include some taiga plants here and there, some ferns, some rambles, you know, just to make sure we are still integrated with this environment. I don't want to just like, you know, dig out a chunk of like an arid landscape and plop it here. I want to make sure that there's, you know, like an integration there. And he's talking more about the meerkats. Like I said, the, uh, um, very social. I don't know if any of you watched the, there was a show on um, was it Discovery Channel or Animal Planet when I was a kid called Meerkat Manor. I don't know if it's still going on, but it was amazing. Uh, I just filmed like this uh, these groups of meerkats and they gave them names and they kind of just showed what their behaviors were like and they were just so personable and so cute and they're just really really cool. And it was just nice to see how social they are. They are incredibly incredibly familial. And they all help each other like take care of the families and the, each other's pups and stuff like that. And one really cool thing is that the adults actually teach the, the young um, quite a lot about how to go about life. For example, the adults actually teach the young how to eat scorpions, which is one of their like favorite foods. Um, because scorpions are venomous, of course, they got the stinger. And the meerkat adults actually teach the pups how to remove the stinger and then eat the animal. Which is um, this really quite cool. Like this is so interesting in how they teach. They do pretty well in captivity, like I said. In the wild, their lifespan is about 12 years or so. But in um, captivity, it's probably closer to about 20 or so, which is a good sign. It's always a good sign when an animal's lifespan is longer in captivity. And um, yeah, that was that was just me talking a little bit about meerkats. I hope you learned a little bit about them too. I I think they're really cool. Always one of my favorite things to watch in a zoo. Um, whenever I go to a zoo and I want to see like a small animal, you know, do its thing, usually the best ones to go for are otters, like Asian small cow otters, and meerkats. Those are the two species I always think are like a good bet if you want to see a lot of behaviors in a zoo because they are usually quite active. Uh, not always, of course, but usually more so than like bigger animals. Like if you want to go and see a tiger, 90% of the time you're going to see it asleep because it's a cat. It's a big cat. Like. Cats sleep all the time. They got, you know, really powerful metabolisms. They need the rest. But as these are small animals, they've got, um, yeah, they've just got a lot more energy and they're just always interacting with each other, always running around. Very cute. And which is, we're coming up to the end of the episode for the most part. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a longer habitat with these rocks along the side. The meerkats tend to stick towards the bottom of this kind of channel and they run around it. Uh, as far as I've noticed, again, they've dug a lot of holes now. Um, you won't see it in this speed build, but you will see it in cinematics. It was a little bit tricky finding some foliage that would work here. I ended up using a marula tree, I believe, to just give it some bushiness. Um, but again, it's it's um, it's trying to balance that, giving it an airy feel without making it feel like a completely different environment than what we've been in. Some of the ways you can do that, I think, are using similar rocks, like still using tiger rocks and then like blending in some of the arid foliage with some of the more temperate ones. So like we have these new grasses from this Africa pack, which are beautiful. But as you can see here, I'm adding in brambles and ferns, which have been used all over the park so far. And it works uh, quite well. I think it looks really nice and blends in together. This whole section is turning out quite nice. Um, you may notice it's quite geometric, like um, in terms of the shapes and stuff. Very much intentional. This whole zoo has been very geometric and I don't know if I've mentioned this in previous episodes but every single path that's in the zoo right now is on a very precise 15 degree angle. I've never turned off that angle snapping for it so that essentially wherever you go if you want to like snap things onto an angle you can. 
and it makes things so much more easy to build and you'll notice like if I do another tour of the zoo uh, which I will do probably after the Africa section is finished you'll see that everything is kind of on that angle which makes things very very uh, convenient for building and for just going about the the process of planning the zoo and everything because of that angle everything's so much easier to work with even across the lake I, man I made sure to keep that angle so very very helpful yeah, that, that's about it. We're pretty much coming to the end of the episode. I want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks for all the support as always. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers, which is excellent. I'll probably be going back to London Zoo relatively soon because I'm doing my dissertation on some stuff there. So I might film some stuff there for a 2,000 subscriber special if you guys are interested in that sort of thing. It might be a lot of fun. So let me know down in the comments what would you like to see. Uh, would you like just a vlog at the zoo or would you like something more specific? Do you want to see me talk about the animals there? Just let me know down in the comments below and I'm more than happy to um, to see what I can do. Uh, of course, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you liked about this habitat. Did you learn something new about beer cats? Um, what do you want to see in the next episode with the penguins? I haven't decided what sort of build that's going to be yet. So we'll see. I'm sure it's going to be quite a fun one. Very excited. African penguins are my favorite penguins. And uh, of course, do like the video. If you did like the video, do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. Once again, every Wednesday, 5 p.m. UK time. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!